Okay, so we are streaming. I'll pass it to Jonas to call the meeting to order. Okay, uh, good night, everybody. Um, call on order for 7.00. Welcome, everybody. SIAC meeting in November. Okay, so any disclosure of interest? Anybody? Only once, twice, okay. Uh, next on the list is presentation, Jason Leach, uh, Sustainable Transportation Corridor on the projects being undertaken by Cambridge. Jason? Hey. Thanks, Jonas. Um, yes, yeah, so my name's Jason Leach. I'm the Sustainable Transportation Coordinator in the Transportation Engineering section of the city. And Kathy asked me to um, come to the meeting tonight just to present some of the projects that we've worked on over 2021. I'm also the staff rep, as well as uh, Claire um, with the Cambridge Cycling Trails Advisory Committee. And so I gave this presentation to them at our last meeting on November 11th. So the, the projects in here are all completed projects. Um, usually in the new year, I will go over projects that are upcoming um, or planned for the coming year. Um, so as I go through, if you have any questions, just feel free to ask and um, we'll go from there. Okay, next. So these are all active transportation projects. Some of them are within the road allowance. Some of them are off-road and there's various um, initiatives that we've been taking, whether it's multi-use trails or bike lanes, or in this case, this is a pedestrian refuge island that the region of Waterloo installed on Water Street, just near Craig's Crossing, the pedestrian bridge. Um, and just to the north of that square is Bruce Street. Next slide. So this is a photo of the new pedestrian refuge island that was installed. Again, the region of Waterloo installed this, which just helps uh, pedestrians get across the road in a busy location. Next slide. Similarly, there's a new pedestrian refuge island that the city installed on Elgin Street North. And this is a crossing of the Northview Heights Trail, which leads up to the Conestoga Boulevard area. Next slide. And that's a picture of the new pedestrian refuge island. Uh, this also just brings more awareness to the trail crossing uh, for drivers to, to slow down and know that there's going to be pedestrians in the area, as well as providing a refuge for pedestrians crossing. Next slide. Allendale Road, uh, the city installed a new multi-use trail. If you're familiar with Allendale Road, it's up near North of Toyota um, goes between Fountain Street and Riverbank Drive. And then there's a new road, Intermarket Road, as part of a new development you can see there kind of towards the bottom left um, that links in with Allendale Road. Next slide. So there's a shot of the multi-use trail on the south side. It runs the entire length um, and will you know, connect future employment lands and, and residential in the future as well. Next slide. This is a picture of Main Street between Ainsley Street and Wellington Street. And here we installed new Sharrows. This, uh, the cycling facilities in this area are supposed to be shared use. So it's single file shared use lane. And so we installed new signs that say single file as well as these green Sharrows on the road just to make drivers aware that they are sharing the space with cyclists. Next slide. And there's a picture there of the green shadow that's been painted on the road. Those were just done a few weeks ago, actually. Next slide. So around the corner from Main Street on Wellington South, we did the same thing. Further south of this photo, uh, there are bike lanes on the road, but between Commonwealth Lane and Main Street, there are not bike lanes just because there's not space in the road with the turn lanes and whatnot. So again, to um, bring awareness that cyclists are in the area and that it's a single file shared use lane, we installed the chairs and new signage. Next slide. And there's a, again, another photo of a, the new chair and painted on the road. 
Next slide. Um, this project has two phases, Dunbar Road Multi-Use Trail. So the phase one, which is shown in yellow there, is complete. And phase two, which goes between Industrial Road and Hespler Road, which is to the right of the green mark, um, that is currently in the budget for 2022. Um, that will still require approval by council, um, but if approved, that project will go ahead next year. Next slide. And there's a picture of the new multi-use trail as well as a pedestrian refuge island that was installed as part of the project to cross Dunbar Road. There was two of those installed as part of this project. Next slide. Uh, this is a diagram of Sheldon Drive. A few years ago, new bike lanes were incorporated in the reconstruction of Sheldon Drive between Conestoga Boulevard and Wolseley Court, Court, which is in the center of the map there. And this year, the remaining section between Wolseley Court and Franklin Boulevard was reconstructed and new bike lanes were incorporated into that project as well. Next slide. Those new bike lanes were just uh, painted probably a week ago, so I don't have a photo of it, but this is a photo of the phase one section and just kind of gives you an idea of what the new area looks like. So you got the vehicle lane, the bike lane to the right, um, there's a bike lane on the other side to the left, and a dual center left turn lane in the middle. Uh, could you just go back a slide, Karen? So um, just for context, there is a multi-use trail on Conestoga Boulevard, and then now there's new multi-use trails on Franklin Boulevard that the region installed. So this is a connection between the two, it fills in a nice gap there in the industrial area. Okay, next slide. And then next slide. This diagram is of the Boxwood subdivision, which has been in place for several years now. Um, but as development has occurred and new buildings have went in, they've left the base asphalt and base road surface in. And this year they finally finished the surface asphalt, which included painting the new bike lanes on the road. Next slide. So both those road, Hero DevTech Drive and Goddard Crescent now have bike lanes on both sides, as you can see in this photo here. And again, those were just finished about a month ago. Next slide. Um, a few years ago, the region of Waterloo had a reconstruction project on Fountain Street and King Street West. Uh, it goes from Shantz Hill Road on Fountain Street to King Street and then on King Street from Fountain Street over to Eagle Street. And as part of that reconstruction project, the green lines there are new multi-use trails that were installed. Um, typically, when we do our boulevard multi-use trails, they're installed using asphalt. These particular ones were installed using concrete, which kind of made them appear as a large sidewalk. Um, so cyclists and skateboarders were using them, and we were getting concerns that um, some users thought it was just a sidewalk and that those users shouldn't be there. So we did some sign and marking improvements to indicate to people that it is a shared use facility, it's a multi-use trail and um, cyclists and other users are all meant to share the same space. Next slide. So this is a photo of some of the new uh, pavement markings and signage that's in place now. Um, as you can see the, the green markings that show the direction and the, the bike and the pedestrian symbol. There's also a yellow center line down the entire stretch of the trail. And new signage there, you can see on the photo on the left, uh, the signs just on the grass there, it says shared pathway. So it definitely looks much more like a multi-use trail now than a wide sidewalk as it did previously. Next slide. And that's just a, a picture of the new crosswalk at Riverside Park along that same multi-use trail. Next slide. Um, this is another region of Waterloo project um, that they've been working on for a few years, and that's the reconstruction of King Street through downtown Preston. And as part of that project, 
uh, new bike lanes were incorporated on the road. And that goes from Eagle Street all the way down to uh, Dolph Street there. Next slide. And this is just an aerial uh, photo kind of showing the layout of the, the new roadway. So you have the parking lanes and then the bike lane you can see there and then the vehicle lane. It's the same on both sides. Next slide. And as well as part of that reconstruction project, uh, new bike racks were installed throughout downtown Preston. Next slide. This is another project that was just recently completed um, by the region of Waterloo, and that is the new roadway, the Queen Shaver Boulevard, which is at the very south end of Cambridge. It's actually in North Dumfries Township, just south of the city limits. And that goes from Water Street slash Highway 24 over to Franklin Boulevard. And then Franklin Boulevard was extended up to Myers Road. So the green areas shown there are where there are new multi-use trail as part of that project. And you can see on the left side there, there's actually a switchback connection down to the Paris Cambridge Rail Trail, which is shown in the black dots. Next slide. And because this was just recently opened, uh, I don't have any photos of it, but this is just an aerial photo from spring of 2021. Um, and you can see some of the, the multi-use trail that was being constructed on the north side of the road there. And then at the, the top, top left corner of that photo, you can see the start of the switchback that was being constructed that goes down to the rail trail on the left side there. Next slide. Um, I'm going to run through a few of these projects. These were actually done by our landscape architect, who is also a staff rep on the Cambridge Cycling Trails Advisory Committee. Um, but I'll just kind of touch base on these projects for you. So this is a picture of the Grand Trunk Trail in Blair. And the trail was recently repaved. And you can see in the top left photo of that uh, slide, there's a bridge there which is much narrower than the trail. The bridge is probably only two meters wide where the trail is like three meters. So they're doing some improved sign and pavement markings there to um, indicate that it's a narrow section of the trail. And they're installing the sound bell slow speed sign as well, just to alert users, people coming the other direction, um, that really only one person can cross that bridge at a time. Next slide. This is another project that our landscape architect is uh, working on right now. And it's the North Boxwood Trail. And this is just in the design stage. And it's a trail that connects roughly around where the uh, Leash Free Dog Park is on Maple Grove Road and connects over to Fountain Street, um, just north of Boxwood Drive and Vonjo Drive. The facility uh, up against Fountain Street there is uh, the Loblaws facility, just for some context. So that's in the design stage uh, currently. Next slide. Um, this project here is a trail replacement in Riverside Park. So the bridge is currently being manufactured, um, tentatively scheduled to be installed in mid-December. Um, and that's just a pedestrian bridge crossing that creek there in Riverside Park. Next slide. That may be the last slide. The last slide, Karen. Sorry, you're muted, Karen. Yes, that was the last slide. Okay, sorry. okay does, that, does anybody have any questions on any of those projects? Like I said, those are all the completed projects for uh, 2021. Um, usually in the new year, I'll do a presentation to after the budget's been approved to CTAC and uh, let them know what the upcoming projects are that are being worked on and planned for 2022. So if uh, Kathy wanted to have me back, I can always come back in the new year to present on those as well.
Thanks, Jason. I know the group likes to hear about what you guys are doing. And also I learned the term Shero yeah. for the first time. <laughs> it's never too late to learn new things. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I don't have any questions, but I just think it's a uh, great work. Um, I was wondering who the landscape architect might be that's involved with the committee, if you don't mind my asking. Uh, Claire McLaughlin. Okay, great. Yep. Great work. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Jason. <laughs> Do you have any, any statistics of how much these trails um, uh, use it. I mean, Cambridge is not the highest volume of cycling I, as far as I know, but do you have an idea if this is growing the usage? We, we don't have a lot of uh, information currently on uh, use. That's something uh, one of the initiatives we're planning on implementing in 2022 is to get some counting programs in place so we can start tracking um, you know, regularly some of the major trails and then just some of the trails after they've been installed to track some of those numbers. But no, we don't currently have numbers for those. And do you have an idea about where uh, Cambridge usually posted those bikes that you can share bike? I know you, you have some of those in, in Hassler in other locations. Uh, maybe Kathy knows, you know what I'm asking? Like the bikes that you can rent and share? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have no, any? No, we, we currently don't. There is a program back in 2019. Um, it was a pilot shared bike program. Um, it wasn't uh, super successful, but um, we are actually working with the region of Waterloo on a micro mobility program to be implemented in 2022. Um, so that might be an initiative that is coming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any, Any more, more questions, questions for Jason? Oh. Thanks, Jason. We'll right. happily have you back if you have a presentation in the new year for upcoming projects. All right. Well, yep. thanks Thank for you. having me. And I guess I will uh, depart your meeting for now. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Okay, next in the agenda is delegations minutes of the previous meeting. Okay, so this one's fresh in our mind because we actually had a, did meet last month. Um, you can scroll down here, please. Um, presentations, we on our minute. Kelly gave a very wonderful summary of all of Subsidy Green's been up to all year. And we accepted a bunch of City Green meeting notes. Uh, we shared a letter from a resident in response. Then we looked at information at uh, CC Tech Minutes and EAC agenda. And then I let everybody know about the National Heritage Trust Fund update. And I sent some photos to the group today via email. Um, for other business, I sent around to the group um, an update on our um, active subcommittees. So we don't have a lot of active subcommittees right now, but um, things will hopefully start ramping up in the new year. And uh, that was everything. So Jonas, we'll just need a mover and a second around those ones. Yep. Can you have a movie for this to approve the minutes? Funny. And I will, Lori. Thanks, Lori. Sorry. Thank you, Lori. Okay. The minutes is approved. 
Okay, next on the agenda is reports. Yep, could scroll down a bit. Um, oh, wait, there we go. Um, so Kelly isn't here for her uh, usual awesome update, but um, we'll just do a so slow scroll and see what we pick out of here. <laughs> A little faster scroll. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. Uh, there was an update on B City. This was uh, Kelly talked about this. That signs are available for well, City Green members. Um, and it looks like member organizations have to meet. So for the B City stuff, there is the website for it for those who are interested. For more information on that. Uh, more information on the Jane's Walk. So we're, that's the tour of Mill Creek has been one of their Jane's Walks for a while. So I think they're uh, working on that one. Uh, Kelly mentioned the Tremendous program at our last meeting. So just an update on that. And also Kelly mentioned that they're reaching out more to the youth, youth advisory committee. Um, information about the cleanup. Um, and as like the cleanups happen next year, I usually get the, um, the flyer invitation from Paul. I do circulate the group. And Paul's got some informative links at the bottom here for different projects. And a bunch of dates for various events that they're holding. Okay. Um, oh yeah, we have two sets of meeting notes. So I imagine it's all the same topics on this one. So uh, yeah, you just go through quicker, all the same uh, main items. So if you're interested in the specific details, you can take a look at the, the minutes. some information on ancient mariners which we've had presentations on EAC in the past There we go. I think that's the end of them. Oh no, <laughs> they keep going. Okay. Thank you, Karen, for the slow scroll. Um, so we move and second the City Green subcommittee notes so that council uh, is aware of them. Uh, Jonas, can we get a mover and a seconder? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Allison, R, and Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom and Alice. Um, so, just for information, the um, Camber Cycling and Trails Advisory Committee. Committee minute, minutes are here, but Jason gave us a really great uh, overview of a lot of projects. So 
Um, this is just for your, more for your information if you're interested. But I'm sure he covered off a lot of this stuff. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, impressive to see all the bike lanes in the city. Nice to see those connections being made so people can go for long distances on uh, some kind of bike path. Um, so Karen, if you just want to go back to the cover sheet, the rest of the links are going to be on there. <coughs> So item three is the Regional Ecological and Environmental Advisory Committee. Um, if you could click on the, the link there, Karen, it'll take us to their agenda. Okay. Um, correspondences and uh, information items. Oh, that's too small. Yeah, we're looking at item number three. So she's just... Uh, Try to, where did it go? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to see. There we yeah, go. I was following my phone in the agenda. <laughs> um, no, this is a, the centering is a bit strange. Oh. All right, we are back. <clears throat> yeah, we are, we are trying to look at the other item she's trying to open though. Um, can, you, can you try to get it on screen again, Karen? Sorry, I'm uh, not wanting to cooperate here. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's just it's the agenda from the from the regional EAC, so. Um, if you're interested in taking a look at what, what items they're looking at uh, recently at their most recent meeting, you can follow that link. Unfortunately, it's not quite syncing up. It was doing a weird side justification thing. So um, I know that there was one, so just as a reminder, regional EAC reviews development applications. So there is one uh, project one subdivision on there that is in Cambridge, in North Cambridge, that uh, regional EAC reviewed and provided conditions on for the environmental component. If you're interested in taking a look at that, that's pretty much the, the main thing on their agenda that month. Um, so that's just for your information. I'm just gonna try one more time to see if I can get it. Okay. Yeah, because when you start pressing the zoom in, it seemed to push it over to the side yeah, automatically. I can't get it larger than this without it going off the page. I apologize. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah, so the, the first page, well, this page that we're on, I think is the fourth page is that subdivision that's in Cambridge, um, in North Cambridge for an industrial development with um, an environmental component of, um, there's a, a um, wildlife corridor and protection of some features with buffers. So these are just the conditions uh, provided by EAC for that subdivision. So if you're interested, you can go in and read it um, off of the link on the agenda since this is a, um, quite tiny. Thanks, Karen. And then there was, Sorry, go ahead, Jonas, I'm kind of jumping on. Yeah, <laughs> so, okay, the item number four is the Waterloo Airport Runaway Project. Yeah. So, Notes of, uh, of impact assessment. Yeah, so um, SEAC has had a subcommittee for this, for the um, airport expansion of the runways for uh, following that process. And then, um, so there was an airport master plan that we were involved with reviewing and then um, 
in 2019, the Impact Assessment Act was enacted, which um, that act is an update to the federal consultation process and it focuses on health, social and economic impacts. So this project then um, with the change to that act was <laughs> moved into that review process and had to be reviewed under the Impact Assessment Act. So um, if we are able to click on this link, um, it, it's a different format of website. So maybe it'll work for us here in. Yeah, so the, the federal government has reviewed the um, project of the, the airport runway expansions and they've determined that an assessment, an impact assessment is not required. So the project team um, for, the, for the runway expansion had to prepare a detailed project description and this response to the summary of issues. So the public and stakeholders provided comments and the proponent had to respond to all of those. And then based on all this information, the, the um, impact assessment agency has determined that they don't need to uh, continue through this process that they've, they're, um, that they've sat satisfied any uh, concerns related to that act. So this is just an update for SEAC that that's how this uh, was the decision that came out on that. However, we'll still be um, involved as the airport expansion project um, continues through like detailed design information and environmental um, impact studies. So we will, um, we will still be following the project along. Uh, so thanks. Okay. okay, are there business? No other business? All right. Um, I guess this is going to be the last meeting or December 15th is to pending decision or how yeah. are you going to make that call? Yeah, so typically our December meeting is, um, oh, if everyone could just mute themselves if they're not muted already, thank you. Um, typically our December meeting is our, we have a very quick meeting and then we have a little holiday get together, but unfortunately this year just, uh, due to the circumstances, we're not able to get together. Um, so currently I don't have any items that I would be bringing forward to that meeting since it's a, it follows three weeks after this meeting when typically we're on a four week, uh, cycle, but that, that fourth week would push us into Christmas. So, um, I'm going to say that we won't be holding that meeting since I, I don't think there will be items to discuss in the next that would come up in the next two weeks before I'd have to create an agenda. So I'll come out with um, the schedule for 2020 um, at some point in the next few weeks so everyone is aware of that and then we'll resume in January. So uh, but as usual I'll send out emails about things that might pop up that you might be interested in and keep you informed that way. All right, so can we settle now meeting for December then on the minutes for this meeting, right? Yeah. All right. Okay, so no meeting December. I guess everybody will be back in January um, once we get the uh, agenda for uh, 2022. Uh, we'll know when the meeting will be, but um, probably we... You're going to hear from you uh, if you have enough items for the agenda in January. Yeah, so right. January will very likely meet because we would do our chair and vice chair um, mm -hmm. that that process. So um, yeah, I will expect that we would meet in January. And I'll, so I'll be in contact in the next couple of weeks with uh, the schedules for our meetings. So all right, okay. Uh, I guess we are closing the meeting then. I did note it. Did Connie? Did you raise your hand intentionally or? You can just say silent if you didn't have anything. I just noticed a hand pop up there. So making sure that we didn't miss anything. No, sorry. It was just my uh, cursor was sitting on there and it did it all on its own. Okay. So. 
<laughs> Sorry. Well, nice to hear your voice anyways. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay, well, uh, kind of shorter meetings. Yep. A lot of great information from the Trails group. So you know, it was nice to yep. talk in with everybody. Okay, we, we will adjourn at 7.36, and by the way, same time we adjourn the last meeting. Is it? We need, yeah. a, <laughs> we need a mover and a seconder, please. Yep. Can I get a mover for adjourning the meeting? I'll do Connie and Lisa. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Well. Thank you, everybody. I hope everyone yeah. has a great holiday because we won't uh, meet like this before then, but we'll probably be in contact via email. Yep. Thank you, everybody. We are joining a meeting then resetting for 7.37. Okay, a little bit longer <laughs> than the previous one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, thanks, everyone. Thank Take you, care, everybody. Everyone.